So seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. It is in fact 1030 on February 17th. Um, this meeting is being conducted via a remote participation pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting is being recorded and I'm gonna take a moment now and just make sure that everyone who's present can be heard and uh, can speak. So I'll start with Lynn. Present, but not a member of the committee. Right, and I'm gonna to go to Mandy. Present. And Pat. Present. And I just, oh wait, there's Sarah there. Sarah. Present. Thank you. And we have a guest this morning. Uh, Jan, if you just uh, let us know that you can be heard. I'm here, thank you. Great, thank you very much. And of course, we have our note taker as always. Um, so everyone is present and can be heard. And I have up on the screen uh, the agenda for this morning's meeting. Um, we're gonna begin with a discussion with Jen for about 20 minutes or less on um, just basically proclamations in general. And I'll try to explain um, how this came about. And uh, I have a little um, overhead I wanna put up on the screen in a moment um, to guide us, or at least to be in, to, as a reference point as we talk. Um, then we're gonna turn to the rules of procedure. Um, we have a couple of things I think we need to, to look at based on the council discussion last Monday. And then we want to look, we just got the TSO public ways policy. Um, and so that document is also in your folder. We'll take a look at that. Um, and then we will turn to the timeline for town manager goals. So we wanna to get to that as quickly as we can because we need Lynn's uh, involvement there. And then hopefully we'll have time for bylaws for future consideration. Um, there is an issue with the minutes and it may very well be the chair. I'm pretty sure it probably is but I don't actually have the January 20 minutes, um, though they may very well have been said to me. What I got was the February 3rd minutes, and that's actually what's in your folder. Um, so I'm gonna call that a typo, a scrivener's error, but uh, Athena, at some point, um, we might want to uh, just help the chair clarify what happened to the January 20 minutes. They're probably buried somewhere in, in some yeah. file. I, I resent them earlier this morning. Thank so you. I, I, I lost just hold them. Off. Yeah, that's I okay. will. That's okay. Uh, somehow they, they, I missed them. Okay. All right. So if you will bear with me, I'm going to close the agenda file. Actually, I'm going to just, yeah. And um, I want to open up, just hang on for a second. This may take a moment. Um, and that should be okay. Let's try it again, share screen. I wanna take a look at this, okay. And what I wanna look at is this, I call it a, a proclamation calendar. Um, so uh, Athena has put together on the website and Lynn sent this to me, a list of, of uh, not what, but I think all of the proclamations we've done over the last uh, three years. Um, and so what I picked out here, and I need your help, and uh, I think Jen can help us as well, um, the kinds of proclamations that, that we have done multiple times. So every January, we've done a Black History Month, we've done an MLK, and this year for the first time, we did Chinese New Year's Spring Festival. In March, I believe every year we've done a Tibet Day um, proclamation. Um, in June and May, in June, we have lots going on, race Amity Day, um, I'm not sure about Memorial Day. Um, I think that wasn't done every year, uh, Juneteenth and the LGBT proclamation. Um, and then September, Puerto Rico, though I don't think we did it last year. So I had a question about that. And then we've done Small Business Saturday and Human Rights Day in December. So my sense is what I'd like to create, not necessarily today, but over time, um, is just a, a list of what we regularly do Obviously there are other proclamations that come along um, and we just do them when they come. But some of these, I think all of these perhaps are things that we regularly do. And again, what came up at the last meeting, um, unfortunately the counselor brought it up is not here, but I thought she made a good point. Um, where do these uh, say like the, you know, the Chinese New Year, the Tibet Day, the Puerto Rican, right? These come from communities with, uh, you know, from ethnic communities within the town. Um, and so there's a question, first of all, about the Chinese New Year uh, one, where did that come from? And is it something that we would 
um, expect to be doing every year. And then in general, a question about how these kinds of proclamations get generated. Um, could we perhaps create more? Um, there are other communities in town that, that we should reach out to um, was one question. Um, are there some missing here from my list that should be added so that the future chairs of GOL and future GOL committees have a pretty clear sense of what to expect each month? Um, and so it was questions along that line. So Jen, first of all, I guess, um, tell us a little bit about the Chinese New Year proclamation, how that came about. George, before you do that, all yeah. I can see is, uh, I can't see the list. I know you read through it and I don't need to see it, but if you're share screen sharing, all I see is documents with names and a lot of them. So I'm not sure what you're trying to show right now. Okay, so is that true for everybody? They're not looking at a yeah. basic, everyone's seeing the same wrong document. Well, it's or not a document, it's, it's a list it's, of documents in PDF form. So it's okay. in, fi in like all of them. Yeah. Why is it, okay. All right. What I see on my screen is the document I open. So maybe let me stop screen sharing again. Okay. Sorry, but I, that's right. No, no, thank you. That's pointless. I was say the same thing, Pat. <laughs> okay. Um, I hit share screen. Um, this is the, I'm clicking on the document that um, here, and then I'm going to try share again. Yes, okay. yes. All right, I don't know why that happened, and I apologize. Um, so please, if that happens in the future, just yell out. Don't, don't be shy. Just say, that's not the right document. <laughs> okay. So this is what I put together. Um, and so one question is whether, uh, you know, this is accurate, whether it could be added to. Um, that's the kind of thing maybe for the future, but I welcome some help on that today or future comments. But for Jen, the question is, um, you know, first of all, um, in the case of the Chinese New Year, how that came about um, and um, how in the future we can, um, you know, reach out to other communities within Amherst um, in terms of proclamations and also the question whether we want to. I mean, so th there's a lot of questions here, but let's start, Jen, which is how the Chinese New Year uh, one came about. So, um part of being a community participation officer is engaging with the community. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, so I personally happen to know a lot of the African-American geared holidays and celebrations. So it is a lot easier for me. That's how we ended up with the Juneteenth proclamation is I just, I created it knowing that Juneteenth was something that needed to be recognized last year. Um, the Chinese New Year I wanted to do last year, but I didn't, you know, I have, there's a Kwanzaa and then there's MLK Day and then there's Black History Month and I couldn't quite squeeze it in. And um, so I was able to get it in this year. And so I just created one and reached out to the community members to have them um, review it to make sure that I was accurate with what was being um, said mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. make sure that I wasn't being insulting because that's the worst, the last thing that I want to be doing right. is, right. you know, the goal is to be more inclusive. We have a large Asian population that I think should be in you know, we should be more engaged with. And it's a way to start opening up the door for engagement and communication and- I agree, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thoughts from my colleagues, questions from my colleagues. Pat. Yeah, I really like the idea of, of including more ethnic groups in, uh, in our proclamations. So, and I know that there's a large Cambodian um, population. I don't know the holidays. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. So we don't, we, we don't do anything that's religious based, but there is a Southeast Pacific Islander Heritage Month that occurs in May. So last year I had joined, we in town have a South Cambodian Southeast Asian popu uh, Southeast Asian committee that's not you know part of the town um, mm -hmm. and so I had joined that and we were trying to come up with something for me but then COVID happened and it kind of yeah. um, you know I don't just COVID that's really all we can yeah. say about everything at this moment is just COVID <laughs> so um, right right I'm gonna try and um, have a proclamation prepared for for May 
um, for their month. There's no flag raising during that time period because there's so many countries and then there's a conflict, I think, I believe between which flag to utilize and, and not. And so to stay mm -hmm. um, out of that part of it, a proclamation and maybe some type of um, online event would be great. Um, you know, it's really about us educating our community about the different cultures that are here in Amherst yeah. and having them help celebrate it. There is um, a Middle Eastern or Indian, uh, I think it's more Middle Eastern though, uh, holiday, I believe in October that I would like to, to reach out to some more community members to um, create. And um, Mrs. Musanti, um, John mm. Musanti's wife um, reached mm. out and she would like to do a proclamation for April for Child Awareness Day. Um, so that will be coming shortly. I We mm. had a proclamation from years ago. So I gave her that as a as a template to, to use to create a new one. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, those the heritage ones, I mean, and if you know people who have different cultural celebrations, then they should all be included. Um, I think we should try and include as much as we can. Um, Pat. Yeah, and I'm assuming these get posted to the town website, but I, it's unclear to me now that we don't read proclamations when we're um, voting on them. How does this get out to the public? How does how does it? And I'm gonna I'm putting quotes around this. How does it matter? Mm -hmm. Well, I try to host an event to surround it. Right. And so that will go out in the news announcements and, you know, if we can get it on our social media platform so that it can be sent out, you know, then I can grab it on my Facebook page and, and share it out and members of the community can do as well. But I, I typically try to attach it to a, some type of uh, event. event. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mandy. So I, I, I must say, I really support what you're doing, Jennifer. And I, I think it's, I think it's great um, to try and expand these beyond our, the traditional ones we've had prior to, you know, the last couple of years. Um, I do have a question. I liked hearing about which other ones you are um, in terms of, you know, sort of the Latina ones, it's really only Puerto Rican Heritage Day or the Puerto Rico Day, which I think we did not do this past 2020 because we mm -hmm. were asked sort of not to from the schools. I think the schools have normally driven that one. Um, mm -hmm. And there wasn't going to be given COVID anything in person for that one with the mm -hmm. school. With the new Comandantes program, is there more than just Puerto Rico Heritage Day that we should be sort of honoring regarding the Latinx community? I, I don't know. And so, you know, given that program and that they're going to be teaching Spanish immersion and all, that would be one that I'd, if we could explore whether there's anything else, that would be fantastic, I think. Yep. So last year, um, Marta, I spoke with Marta Guevara because she's the one who I connect with for the Puerto Rican Heritage Month. And um, so they did not want to have the proclamation and not be able to have the celebration that they wanted to, to honor it with. So they mm -hmm. decided not to. Um, and then there is a, like a, a Latin or Hispanic Heritage Month. But when I spoke to her about that and, you know, and there's a specific day, there's a, there's a, a, a cultural conflict in there somewhere that I don't have all of the background, mm -hmm. but it, I was like, okay, I, I won't move forward. Right. So the important piece of it is that whatever proclamation, you know, whatever culture you're trying to help, um, it, you know, the community engage with you, you have to be careful to make sure that you are not being insulted. Cause had I ran with that, you know, the H Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, that would have been quite insulting for many. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that I didn't. And I'm, you know, I'm glad that I kept in touch with Marta. So I'm very, I try to be very mindful and conscious of the proclamations and what's in them, like for context, and then what it means to the community as a broad, as a whole. Uh, thank, thank you for that explanation. On, on a sort of um, a non- question thing, more of a, I guess, a clerical thing for George, I'll, I will send this to you, but I added what was helpful to me was, you know, you put in January, say Black History Month. Well, Black History Month is, is February, not January. And so this is this is organized by when sort of GOL and then right. the company needs to do it. So yeah. what I did was in parentheses after Black History Month, I went in and added February. 
you right. know, and so we, we have an idea of when each of these are celebrated too. So I will send that to you because I found okay. that helpful to me, especially oh. for the May, June ones, <laughs> like which ones are in May, which no, ones I, are in June, right, when exactly. in June are they? Um, right. No, it's a draft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This and is I'll send you what I did. Thank you. That's but very much that, I found that helpful. And yes. it's probably helpful to Jennifer too, to, to mm. sort of keep track of when it needs to be in GOL. Right. So, and I think that, so for like December, the human rights days is, is December 10th. So that's pretty close. So you might want to move that one up to November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just appears that some of them are in the actual month that the proclamation is read and then or the event that surrounds it and then some of them are based on when they have to go through so if you just even that out a little bit that would be will do okay. perfect good that's why it's up here and i appreciate it this is great um i, and think I don't that, yeah go ahead. i don't know that we've if we've had a memorial day proclamation i'm i think that's only if we've had the actual parade i can't quite remember yeah. um Okay. And I I'll don't look know into Labor Day either. Yeah, I right. we have the files here though, so I can I right. can look too. I think that the, the focus uh, is appropriately, um, uh, especially given given your work um, on the many um, ethnic communities that are in the town, and I really really do like the idea of making the community aware of of the diversity and richness of, of what we have, and this is one small way in which we can do it. Um, and so that I think is, is fantastic. I thought Pat raised a good question though, and this is uh, maybe something Lynn might want to weigh in on or she may actually not like to hear because um, in the sense that one of the things we're trying to do is, is, is get our meetings to go a little bit more quickly. We, we really do spend an enormous amount of time. On the other hand, um, I've always felt that, that having, back in the days when we could meet in person, having uh, members of that community present and having the proclamation read or at least recognized mm -hmm in public was really an important piece of what we're doing. And right now, understandably, um, given the pressures of our agenda, they end up pretty much in the uh, consent agenda. And so it's just sort of, you know, it's just like an aside. And um, so I kind of sh share with Pat, I think the sense that we need to think about as a council and maybe GOL can help a way in which we can actually take a few moments at the beginning of our meetings, if we have proclamations, and at least with, with some of them that recognize a specific community, um, actually either read them or somehow have a few moments where we recognize them and, and acknowledge them, not just um, you know, putting them in the agenda and passing it as a consent item. Um, so that's, that's something I have felt um, a sort of torn between the desire to get our meetings to move more quickly but also the importance of recognition, which is exactly what you're doing, Shannon. It's really important. So um, any thoughts there? I thought, Pat, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I really thank you for um, talking about bringing, really bringing it back. It's not what makes our meeting longer. It is the issue. <laughs> it is, um, let's just be honest about that. It right. doesn't. You know, we're talking because it's already been voted on. It's yeah. it's it's right. done, and we're honoring a community. It's not uh, right. Yeah. You know, we you know, the problem is us, and grandstanding, and important arguments. Uh, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I think what we really need to do is get back to um, honoring. What, what does that mean? It doesn't mm -hmm. mean consent agenda. Right, right. So that's something, uh, Lynn, go ahead, please. Yeah, so one, one option might be that in the, after we call the meeting to order, in the announcements, we, you know, make a statement like, tonight we are particularly honoring the following group. Mm -hmm. And there is a um, proclamation in the consent agenda. Um, I mean, I suppose if people felt it was appropriate, we could, you know, ask somebody, but here's where Jennifer, I think, is extremely sensitive. And that is if you ask one person to speak from one community, you end up potentially offending five others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to be very careful about that, but just 
maybe an announcement of saying we're honoring them and there is a proclamation is at least a minimal start to this. Um, so. I don't think it's enough. Well, Pat, yeah, Mandy, please. So I'm torn on this because I don't necessarily agree with Pat on um, the reading at the same time because our meetings are for our business um, and proclamations in some sense are our business but are some sense not. Um, and I know that sounds very strange, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're there to get our work done as a council. But there's a couple of things I wanted to bring up. I, I was gonna suggest the announcements, but I was gonna suggest it in the print, but also in the verbal Many of these proclamations are associated with actual ceremonies and festivals and, and celebrations, as Jennifer said. Um, we have been a very bad about announcing them. And if we're going to pass a proclamation that includes asking the community to go to that, um, we should be announcing that, um, in my mind, more than reading the text of necessarily the proclamation, because that gets read at the celebration. Um, Melrose does it in a way that might be nice, but might also really add time. Um, and this is where I'm torn. Melrose actually, after they pass the proclamations, this, this doesn't work in Zoom, um, but they actually then read it in the meeting and they bring up the person that sponsored it and yes. they have a full council photograph with the actual formal proclamation that is signed, the really nice thing, and they probably have seals and all on it. We're not there yet because we're so new, but you know, just that an actual ceremony during the council meeting that obviously adds more time. Um, but so I, I, I thought I'd bring that up. I don't know whether I support that per se, but there are maybe ways to learn from other councils throughout the Commonwealth as a way to do this that does recognize stuff. And I guess it would be interesting to see how Northampton does it, um, how some, you know, East Hampton, some of the councils that are similar sized to us or with similar sized towns mm -hmm. um, to see whether they actually read them in their meetings or whether they generally read them at the event that they are happening for. Because I, I personally like the reading at the event, but we need to, as a council, notify people of the event. Yeah, I think there's a ceremonial aspect to our job, I guess, and yes. uh, and I think that that you're right that it, it creates uh, issues, a number of issues we have to be careful about. One of them is obviously we do not wish to offend any members of the community we try to recognize, um, and secondly, we do have a concern to get our business done. So this is, I think, for a future discussion. Um, I want to honor my commitment to Jen to get her out of here uh, no later than eleven. Um, but I think that this is something, I, I, what I hear from Lynn and I think I hear from my other colleagues is that we at least take a first step um, by uh, acknowledging these when they come in some fashion. Um, I still personally would like to see um, if it's appropriate, uh, a representative, a sponsor, whatever from the community, um, realizing that there might be cases where that just isn't possible and that's fine. But if it were possible, I think there is something just very uh, effective and moving about that. Um, obviously easier when we could physically be present. Now it's a little bit more complicated. So maybe it's, this is for the future. But um, what I'm hearing is that um, there is a sense that we'd like to recognize it a bit more and, and we have to work on how to do that. Um, and we also are very grateful to Jen and what she's been doing and want to encourage her to keep doing it. Um, so this was an attempt for GOL just to get a sense of the lay of the land. Um, and this has been very helpful. Um, so um Jen maybe, have her hand raised. Oh please, Jen. Yeah, I just I just want to chime in and then um I'll I'll have to go so everyone knows I'll be on the Mill District's live broad show um broadcast. So I'm very honored to do that as well. All right, um good. so a the the select board used to require that whoever was sponsoring the whoever brought the proclamation to the select board would go and speak. And typically that meant if there was an event behind it that a flyer to the event would be included in the packet. Um, and so that was helpful. I can't quite remember if they read the proclamation there as well. 
um, live. I don't necessarily think that that's a bad idea. I think you guys have a different platform of listeners that might attend these events. And so to read that proclamation and to give that histor historical piece about it is very helpful to the culture and the awareness. I also would like to say that, you know, and I don't know if you guys have time and also the proclamations probably take like three minutes to read, right? So, um, but also, and I don't know if appropriate or not, but just something for you guys to think about, like, uh, the land acknowledgement for the from the indigenous people and the African American um, contribution that was created by uh, town community member Lauren Mills is something that you guys should think about reading at the beginning of all of your meetings. I don't, you know, like I don't know if that's too how that lies, but it shows the community that you guys are are working on improving and, and, and acknowledging and recognizing the his, the way the history of uh, different cultures. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's it. Um, it's been a pleasure. I have to go. I'm very nervous. And um, well, you're break you're a leg fine. as we say in performing. Break if you leg. guys if you guys have more questions, please feel free free to uh, email me or I can come back anytime. Thank you. All right. Thanks, well, Jennifer. Yeah. Bye. 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 Um, I want just to say, Sarah, I cannot, because I'm sharing screen, I cannot see um, a hand raise. So I'm trusting my colleagues to uh, speak up if Sarah's trying to get in to speak, because uh, all I see is her name. So um, once I go away from screen sharing, I can see everyone again. But at the moment, I can only see a name. So Sarah, if you have something to say, please go right ahead. Otherwise, um, I'm just, I'm actually going to throw it out to you for just to, to the committee as a whole, um, what our next steps will be, um, or are there any next steps at the moment? Obviously, I'm going to work on this draft um, and bring that back to you, and we'll, we'll get that fixed just as an internal document for our sake. Um, I'm hearing that, that the committee would, would suggest to the, to the president that um, we do, at least initially, we make some effort to just acknowledge uh, proclamations at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and then maybe in the future, I mean, TSO technically is the outreach committee. As I was listening, I was thinking, where did outreach go, right? Remember OCA? <laughs> and outreach went to TSO. And so maybe this is something I can raise with T the TSO chair um, as something that that committee can, uh, can work on a bit. Because um, technically GOL, we just, we're just management, right? We just sort of make sure things are done and. And um, so uh, any final thoughts on this in terms of where you wanna go other than a better draft would be helpful. The calendar would be better. Um, a sort of a message to the president who's present anyway. Um, uh, anything else that you'd like me to work on? Um, do you want me to reach out to TSO? Does that even make sense? Um, since outreach is technically part of their, their charge. I don't see why it needs to go to TSO. Okay, just I mean, just saying, you know, they could they could continue I know, the con I, I heard conversation you. with Jen and okay, all right, that's fine. I mean, we could be the contact person. There's no problem with that. Um, um, okay, uh, so uh, unless there's further thoughts, I'm going to uh, move on to the next. Anybody? I don't see any hands. Um, I can't see Mandy at the moment, um, but um, I'm assuming that we're done with this item. Okay. All right, we need to go to um, review of rules of procedure uh, based on the council discussion last Monday and my sense, so I'm gonna stop share for a moment and we'll see what happens, see what bad things happen. Um, and I'm gonna hopefully find, all right, put you away. My reading of the meeting was that there were two rules of procedure that we need to review based on the council discussion. And if I'm missing something, please speak up. One was rule 5.7. Councilor Brewer raised a concern that I feel we need to at least discuss. I'm, I'm not sure how we're gonna address it. I'm kind of hoping Mandy will be able to enlighten me here. Um, but, and then the other was the rule procedure 6.3, both D and E. So I was gonna take them in order. Did anyone have a sense that there were other rules that I felt everything else pretty much, um, there were no uh, objections that I could see that were raised. Um, I felt those were the two rules that we need to spend some time on this morning. Um, so if you'll bear with me for a moment, I'm going to um, try to put this document up. This is a, um, yeah, we'll see how this works. 
So this is the uh, Word version with the changes in it. And um, I'm going to move that out of the way for a moment. Sorry about this, guys. All right, that's not what I wanted. I have too many things <laughs> on my desktop. It's pretty sad. Okay. All right, share screen. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, I'll see this should be it. All right. Yeah. Okay, so if I, sorry. And so I'm gonna move this up. So you should see the very first page, Amherst Town Council Rules and Procedure. And I'm going to scroll down to 5.7, try not to get dizzy. Um, okay. So open meetings. Okay. And my sense was it was 5.7D. Um, this also may impact the appendix B, but um, Council Brewer had a concern about how um, this is notified to the public. And the document um, says that this should be, there should be, uh, shall publish notification of the open meeting on the town bulletin board and town calendar. And so she felt this was not adequate. Um, I'm hoping some of you actually understand why, um, because I don't, um, since it's on the town calendar and the town bulletin board. So Mandy, please help enlighten me. I, I'm not sure I quite understand it either, although I think what I got from her concern um, was that D does not actually require it to be a council meeting. Okay. Um, even though it says town calendar and I think Councillor Brewer wanted it to be clear that this would be called as a council meeting. Okay. Rule eight. Section 8.1 doesn't require that either, but I think that was her concern is that it be called as a council meeting um, with a council agenda, quorum requirements, all of that stuff. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, how you might be able to modify this um, yeah. that determines the request meets the requirements of Charter Section 8.1 and since the date, time, and location for the meeting, the clerk of the town council shall publish notification on the town bulletin board um, and as a council meeting on the town calendar, maybe? Okay, that would, that would perhaps address it, but the question, I guess, the bigger question is why does it need to be a uh, council meeting? I, I think, can well, somebody it, enlighten me there? It doesn't have to be. I think right, exactly. Brewer was asking for it to be. And no. why? Why does she want it to be? Because, because uh, there might be, yeah, anybody help me there? I didn't quite get a sense of why she felt it had to be a council meeting. Um, is, is, is it because, I don't know. Um, uh, my assumption is, is because she wants to make sure that counselors attend hmm. and that it not be uh, just seen as, you know, a group of residents have a meeting, but it's not considered a public meeting. It's not considered a, a specially called meeting, but I am just speculating. Yeah, but I didn't get a clear sense from her comments and I did not reach out to her, which is my fault. Um, but uh, I mean, this isn't that kind of meeting. I guess my first thought is just that this is a different kind of meeting. It's, it's, it's called by the residents to uh, have, a, you know, um, but okay. I mean, I guess the argument would be it's called by the residents to uh, address the council on some topic. And so Alyssa's thought would be something to the effect that, well, surely that should then be an official meeting of the council. So may I guess that's the argument that, you know, we're not talking about talking to the school committee. We're not talking about a meeting addressing the library. This is a meeting called by the residents to address the council about a specific matter. Right. And, sh and her argument would be, I take it, surely that should be, um, uh, you know, listed and acknowledged as a official meeting of the council. It's not just a Kind of get together a chit chat um so i guess that's the and that does make some sense to me since they are gathering uh to dress us on a specific item it would seem to be appropriate uh, if, if only at the level of courtesy let alone anything else 
that it be uh, an official council meeting um, where we expect councilors to be present and minutes to be taken. So I, I, I'm beginning to see, I think, what she's, she's trying to make the point. There should be a record of it. Um, and the question is, is that what we want? Um, so that, that makes more sense to me. Pat? Sarah's well, got to up too. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go with Sarah first. I'm sorry, Sarah, please. Athena also has her hand up. And so I'm, I'm wondering if she might, what I would say is that if we're not sure on this, but it was important to Alyssa because Alyssa knows um, a lot more about process than I think most of us do, except for, you know, maybe Athena who has her hand up. Um, I think before we make any um, decisions here, I think that we might want to speak to Alyssa um, and find out exactly and find out why this was important to her and also find out what process we should be following and and why. Just my suggestion. Okay, okay. You would ask that we reach out to her first before we make any changes, okay? Athena, please. Um, I, I advise okay. that we post these as open meetings. I think they they meet the standards of open meetings. We're discussing things within the council's authority among a quorum. I, I don't see why we wouldn't. I advise us to always post them as open meetings. I agree with, mm -hmm. with Alyssa that it should be posted that way. We've okay. done it the last time we did an open meeting of the residents. I think it was about the, um, the SRO project on Northampton Road. We posted that as an open meeting. I think that should be our standard. Okay, I, I think I'm seeing the, the, the logic behind that. I think that's exactly what Alyssa was, was saying. I just didn't quite follow it at the time. But um, so the question then goes back to this. I know Athena can weigh in here that maybe Mandy's suggestion, cover, I just need language now that would ensure that it's uh, posted that way because it's, it shall publish notification of the open meeting, um, which sounds to me in my simple-minded way as exactly what, we want, but it's not. But I yeah. think we can add the phrase as a council meeting, you know, after, you know, so it would read shall publish notification of the open meeting on the town bulletin board and town calendar as a council meeting or something. Um, or a special uh, council meeting, I guess. Or a special council meeting as a special council meeting. Um, I, and where do you want that inserted? You want I that think inserted? Before the, between and and town calendar and as a special council meeting on the town calendar. My, my only concern about using the word special is that special is used when we don't plan. It's sometimes used when we don't plan to have public comment. But it's not a regular meeting, and we can still have public comment right. at special meetings, and it is a special meeting. It's under Charter 8.1. Yeah. I, I actually agree with posting this as a public meeting. I, oh, yeah. I, as a council. What? Say that again, Lynn. I'm sorry. I, I feel these need to be posted as town council meetings. Yeah, I think we'll, yeah. Okay, I think there's agreement there. Sarah, would you be satisfied with the sense that with this discussion and with Athena's input, this is exactly what Alyssa had in mind and that by adding this language, um, we would be meeting that concern um, because otherwise this would require us to meet in two weeks and, and I don't see any reason to postpone it. Also the language, could, if there's a problem with the language, we could change it at the actual council meeting. Um, but I'd like to have this, before the council at the next council meeting um, and not have to go back. Um, because if I do reach out to Alyssa, we'll have to postpone this until March 3rd. I'm, I'm fine with that. I think maybe um, this is just a heads up for us. Um, I mean, George, you're the one that was like, I'm not so sure. And I don't think any of us said anything ahead of time. So maybe mm -hmm. this is just a good reminder for all of us when we're reading things. If we don't really understand, maybe we should at that point, either if you catch it or if we catch it, um, try to say, well, maybe we should have that clear out to them before, or that we should um, them invite them. Exactly. But I didn't catch it, so there's no, I mean, I don't find any blame on that. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. no, oh. No. It would have been nice to have her here. I agree. Yeah. George, yep, I just Mandy. have one um, clerical thing to fix in C. C, the request. When I put the hyperlink into town council at amherstma.gov for the hyperlink it added yeah. into the actual wording instead of just the hyperlink the mail to colon yeah. so i think in the wording itself we just need to delete the mail to colon yeah. 
it won't delete the hyperlink. It's just, I screwed up what wording was hyperlinked. <laughs> Yeah, let me see if I can you do this. failed us, Mandy. <laughs> oh no, no, she you doesn't. weren't perfect. I was not oh. perfect, Pat. <laughs> yeah, right, you did that. What you did was fine, George, just like that. And no colon, so it says the council or by email at and then town council at. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yep, and All it'll right. be hyperlinked in the document that way. All right, so what we have now, and this is a change to the document, so we will need to vote on this in a moment, but let me just make sure the language is what we want. Um, D will now, we're suggesting amending it to insert uh, this phrase. So we'll now read, once the council president determines the request meets the requirements of charter section 8.1 and sets the date, time and location for the meeting, the clerk of the town council shall publish notification of the open meeting on the town bulletin board and as a special council meeting posted on the town calendar, comma, and notify the first 10 residents who made the request. Notification shall be published in at least 10 days in advance of the open meeting. So essentially we're inserting that phrase after and. Do we need the word posted? I, don't, I That's a good question. I don't know, I don't know the answer. As a special council meeting, we don't. Is as, that? As a special council meeting on the town calendar. Uh, it just seemed to be an important word for uh, Alyssa, but is it uh, is it just redundant? Well, um, we're publishing notification as a special town council meeting on the town calendar. Right, yeah. right. That's that's posting. Okay, so let me take that out. So it now reads as a special council meeting on the inserted. Okay, so uh, okay, Mandy. I move to add the phrase as a special. <laughs> council meeting on the between the words and and town calendar in rule section uh, six five point seven d second d'angelo so we have a motion and we have a second any more discussion realize i cannot see all hands so if you have anything to say just yell it out but otherwise i'm going to move immediately to a vote and um, so I'll start with Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. Sarah. Aye. The chair is also an aye, and we have one absent. So the vote is four to zero with one absent. Uh, the motion carries. Now, um, does this, again, try not to get dizzy, but um, does this affect, do we need to make any changes to Appendix B? Um, in terms of making it clear to whoever signs this or reads it that, um, so it says the following residents of the town of Amherst submit this request, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. And so where in this does it say that it's going to be, uh, you know, what happens, I guess the question becomes, does this document need to state somewhere what happens after this is, um, submitted and supposedly happens? Do we need to say anything on this document or is this sufficient? I think we decided this was sufficient yeah. as long as you have the rule stating what happens afterwards. Okay, okay. So I, I'm hearing that there's no desire or need to change this either based on the discussion at the council meeting or based on what we've just done. Um, this is adequate, this is fine. I don't remember anyone raising an issue with it, um, but, and it sounds like I'm, that's true. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna move then to uh, six, what is it? Six D and E? Point three. Oh yeah, 6.3. So again, try not to get dizzy, but let me just scroll here. So um, I attempted to come up with a modification of 6.3 D. Okay. Um, before, let me, I'm sorry, um, 6.3, so, okay. right. So currently we have um, this language and it, it raised a whole host of concerns, I think, amongst people. Um, our intention was simply to encourage people or to remind people that they have the tool of calling the question. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I'm, first of all, this needs to come out. Okay. Um, Mandy has some language she'd like to propose to fix this. Um, I have an even more radical suggestion, which we can perhaps wait until after we look at Mandy's language. But my thought is that we might not fix it at all. I know we just take up, just leave it the way it was. Um, and so let's start with Mandy. Let's see, Mandy, what are you suggesting we do here to... Yeah. Um, I know three of us were here when we initially added, made this proposed recommendation, but Sarah was not. So I'll give a little background. I originally proposed at least the point of adding the previous question into D, and then we came up with, we didn't like that being allowed to be interrupting. So we were adding this phrase or speak without recognition because the goal for trying to add the previous question into not needing recognized was um, it's hard. It, it could add time to the debate um, or to the time it takes to get to a vote if you have to be recognized before you can call the question in that um, at least in the Zoom era, your hands are in an order um, people might be ready to be done, but people might continue talking um, and it just might take a while to get there, even if people were ready to be done um, the discussion. Um, and so I wanted to propose something that might, um, if people are ready to be done the discussion, because you have to remember a previous question requires a two thirds vote. Um, you know, so nine, nine people who are actually, if, if we have all 13 voting, um, you know, it would require nine to actually end debate, um, to figure out a way to get to that question more efficiently if someone wants to actually call the question. Um, and so the point, the, there was concern that people would be able to interrupt that it's not allowed um, in terms of Robert's rules or why are we restating Robert's rules? So um, given that, I'm gonna read what my proposal is. It changes and adds a couple of things. It will be two sentences, um, but in, all, in D, I didn't add an extra E. <laughs> I don't know how people will like that. Um, and I do, I, I, I came up with this or at least this proposal originally because of, you know, one thing of efficiency, but I remembered um, when the Charter Commission visited Brookline, and I actually went and looked up Brookline's rules, um, which is a town meeting. We were all as town meeting members and Charter Commissioners surprised that Brookline allows someone who has not been recognized to speak to call the question in Brookline town meeting. Um, they can just at the end of a speaker between speakers call the previous question. Um, and that surprised us all and was something that we all thought of, of oh, wow, um, that is potentially efficient. You still have to vote, but it, it might be a little more efficient on getting and, and plays less games, as we all know from town meeting that, that moderators would, in some sense, play a game on who they call in an attempt to, if they had figured it out, um, get to someone who might call the question. Um, and so just allowing you to do that without recognition sort of stops those games. So here's all that is to say, here's my proposed change. I will read the whole two sentences and then discuss and then explain what my changes are. Counselors shall not interrupt a colleague except to raise a point of order, to express a point of personal privilege, or to assert the charter right to postpone. Counselors shall not speak without recognition except to call the previous question or doubt the presence of a quorum. Um, and so what I did was I moved the doubt the presence of a quorum from interrupting a colleague to speaking without recognition. Hmm. I added to interrupting a, coll a colleague to assert the right, the charter right to postpone, um, because our charter seems to imply that that can be done at any time during debate. Um, the other two, point of order and point of personal privilege, I went back to Robert's rules. Those are interruptible points. Right, right, there right. are a number of other points where you can interrupt someone speaking, but those are two of them. And so I left that with interrupting a colleague because Robert's rules are default already allows that. Um, Robert's rules does not allow someone to interrupt a colleague to doubt the presence of a quorum. 
term. So I actually removed that from that sentence and added it to speaking without recognition. And then that's where I also added the sentence, added the call the previous question, because that's what I felt uh, the original GOL's position was on calling the previous question in terms of recommending this change. Okay, okay. Good. Now I'm, I'm prepared to start writing, uh, putting this text into uh, the document, but maybe first before I start that, just general thoughts on what Mandy's proposing. So, um, and again, I cannot see Sarah's hand. I can see Lynn, Mandy, and Pat. Um, so um, if anyone wants to just make some general remarks or do you want us to put this text up uh, first? Um, I mean, I, I, I wanna reinforce, I guess, the thought that the reason, uh, this is more for Sarah, I think, um, the reason this was done was to um, allow people the opportunity, uh, not by interrupting people, but by speaking when uh, without recognition to call the question, um, to help move debate along. In other words, it, it's been going on for 15, 20 minutes or whatever, um, and you're waiting to be recognized. This would allow you in a period where there is, si where there is silence um, to say, I call the question. Um, and I guess the question is for us, is that something people are comfortable with? Um, so not interrupting someone, not so Mandy speaking, and I just shout out, I call the question, that would not be permissible. But once Mandy were through speaking, but before the, the president or the presiding officer recognized another speaker, this would allow me or someone to say, you know, Madam President, I call the question. Um, are people comfortable with that? The idea behind it is that, at, first of all, it's a motion. It, requ it requires a second. Is that correct? It does right. require a second, so and, you're making, and then it goes yeah. to a motion. Right, a vote immediately without debate. So it's a motion. It requires a second, and it goes immediately to a vote. There's no debate, and it requires two-thirds. So the whole series of, um, you know, sort of uh, breakers there to prevent people from abusing it. Um, so that's the question. Are people comfortable with that? Because Mandy's language would allow that. And that is what GOL was trying to do. Um, and so thoughts on that? Or do you want me just to put the language in and you can look at the language as, as it's written? Pat. Um, I'm gonna, I, I'm comfortable with the language that Mandy would like to insert, but I'm, but at the same time, um, I was really uncomfortable the night that it happened um, around the apology. Now it turns out, I found out later, it was done for very good reasons, but there, but um, Darcy's charge of this is undemocratic um, really bothered me. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, you, you, man, we, I think it was Mandy was talking about it gets rid of the games of the, um, the town manager, the town moderator playing with the vote. I don't want this to be used as a game. Um, and I do support the language you're saying, but I, I am, and maybe it's just a wait and see, but um, because I certainly supported the reason to call the question. Absolutely, but not knowing it, it really set me off. Um, so I, I've said enough. I don't, I don't want to keep repeating myself. I think it was that experience that caused a yeah. number of us to have a second thought, but I, then I had a third thought, which, <laughs> which is that, um, you know, it's perfectly, permissible to do that. And it's now up to the counselors to decide whether they wish to have debate right. on this or not. Now, it occurred to me that you could, and Mandy can speak to this and maybe others, but you could perhaps have a rule of procedure that would say that the question, can, the calling the previous question cannot be accept, will not be accepted uh, if there has not been any debate on the topic. In other words, uh, there has, we would require there must be some some debate um, before that question can be entertained. So if it were, if somebody said, you know, I call the question before there had been debate, if you had a rule in place, assuming it's, it's permissible, the president could say, well, that's out of order because we've not yet had debate. 
Uh, in other words, no one has spoken one way or the other. After people have spoken, even one person, um, someone could then call the question. Um, but in the case that we had, um, Congress were perfectly free to make it. I mean, if, if people felt it was undemocratic, they should have voted no. Right. Um, um, and, but they didn't. So um, that was a perfectly, you know, free vote. Um, so. Well, you know, in this instance, if the information I have is correct, it was a really good decision. But I, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not having a problem with Mandy's language. I think that we have a right to call a question. Uh, and if debate had happened before we were able to call the question, uh, I think uh, uh, it could have been a very negative experience for the whole council. And um, so, I, you know, so again, yeah. I'm not having trouble with the language we'd like to insert. I want us to pay attention to whether this gets used inappropriately. But how do you know that in advance? Because I, go ahead, Mandy. Yeah, you, you asked the exact right question, Pat. How do you know it in advance, right? Um, and, and, you know, in coming up with this language, I actually went back and looked at Robert's rules because I wasn't sure whether this was one, given my experience in various places with interrupting and not or not being recognized, yeah. whether it was one that could or not. Um, and one thing I saw just, just for information purposes is Robert's rules, you're perfectly, d d does not require actual debate to happen before this um, motion is used. So it can be used immediately. And, and it specifically says, and it's up to the body to determine whether they want to have debate with that. Right. Too. Right. Um, that being said, this proposal changes the Roberts rules default, right? Um, that's the point of this proposal is so we don't default to Roberts rules, which would require being recognized before calling the previous question, because that's what Roberts rules mm -hmm. requires for at least the previous question and actually the presence of a quorum. And so our local rules can change the default. Uh, we've done it a number of times. This is one that would do that change. And so it could be changed by rule to answer George to require at least some debate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure I would support that. Right, on right. an initial ground because um, number one, who's the first one that gets to speak? Is it just luck of the draw? Um, if you're gonna require at least one speaker um, versus all 13, if you're gonna require all 13 be able to be given an opportunity to speak before, you know, it, 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 I think that gets too complicated and might defeat the purpose versus making the counselors make that decision on their own um, and have two thirds agree that yes, debate can essentially not happen if it's the first motion that's made, right? Um, versus right. no, we wanna hear some more. Um, to give you an idea what Brookline does, and maybe this is something we would consider for a president, I'm not sure I'd write it in because it's so confusing already. Um, Brookline, I have their, I, I pulled up their rules because I was interested in what they say. For to close debate, a motion um, may be made from the floor without the need for the moving party to be formally recognized. If a motion for the question is made, and, and this is where the, this, this is again, and if in the moderator's judgment, adequate debate has been heard on both sides, the moderator allows the motion to come before the meeting. So that's another Robert's rules change that they've done. Um, prior to the vote, this is the one that I think maybe we would want to consider. The moderator can read the names of those who have signed up in advance to speak but have not yet been heard and points out or calls out the names of those who are standing at the microphone waiting to be recognized. So one thing they do, and so for those of us that have been in town meeting, Brookline runs their town meeting speaking a lot different than Amherst ever did. Um, you had to sign up in advance basically. So there was an actual list. Um, but what we could suggest to the president is if there is a motion for the previous question and the president has recognized or on Zoom, it's a little easier, has a list of people who still want to speak, the president could read that list out before the motion is um, voted on. I don't know whether it's wise or not, but that's something that could be done. 
when I was in Brookline, the moderator used it to point out that there was a teenager who wished to speak on the matter when the motion to close debate had been made. And the, the town meeting decided to hear the teenager before they closed debate. Um, it was on a school issue, I think, so. Okay. George, I'm wondering if, if Sarah is very good uh, and knowledgeable about rules, et cetera, also. Sarah, do you have any comment that you'd like to share? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is that um, in using Robert's rules, you know, all the rules sort of build on each other. Um, and so if a body is abiding by open meeting law the entire time, then um, there wouldn't be anything undemocratic about this, um, us changing the default and doing it this way. Um, and I think that, you know, as long as the, the body was conscientious and was, you know, following open meeting law and wasn't trying to play games and everybody knew that, you know, this is something that you'd use with discretion. I mean, I, I think that there are times when it would be appropriate and um, useful. I mean, I, I can't think of any real reason to say we shouldn't do it this way. Um, I, and I, you know, I understand people saying, you know, you, it's rude to interrupt or you wanted to have something to say, um, but I don't necessarily think that the way this is written or how we're talking about doing it would be doing that. Um, so I can't think of a reason why not to do it. I mean, I can, <laughs> you know, if used properly, I think it would be very useful. Okay. 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 So what I'm hearing, if I may, is that we should put the language that Mandy's proposing on the screen and we should look at it. And then we, uh, assuming a motion is presented, we should, we should vote on it. Um, is that acceptable? So I was going to um, have Mandy uh, dictate to me um, the language again, and I will put it on the screen and um, then we can discuss it and vote on it. So, so I will, start with the two blue sections there that are added would be deleted. Um, okay. I'm going to delete this. Where they're added. Um, okay. And you would also, and then now after the or, before the to doubt the presence of a quorum, you're going to, we're, we're going to add after that or. So or right here? Yep, right there. Right. Or to assert the charter right to postpone period. Okay, so council, yeah, okay. Counselors shall not speak without recognition. Except to call the previous question. Or. Okay. And then the rest is is what I had moved it to, or to All doubt right. the. Which is All right, so let me read this out loud, and if there's any change, mistakes or errors, please speak up. But counselors shall not interrupt a colleague except to raise a point of order, to express a point of personal privilege, or to assert the charter right to postpone, period. Counselors shall not speak without recognition except to call the previous question or to doubt the presence of a quorum, period. Now, I have a question. You're all going to laugh, but that's all right. Um, I'm used to it. Um, what is a point of personal privilege? I wanted to ask that as well. <laughs> um, I, I, my point of personal privilege might be: I just want us to shut up and get to a vote. But can I? Can I just say, Madam President, point of personal privilege? I want us to shut up and go to a vote. That certainly can't be right. So, what is a point of personal privilege? Mandy, so please. A point, well, there's a couple examples here. Point of personal privilege is things like I can't hear. We use uh, them similar to points of order, um, but um, things like I can't hear, I can't see, um, stuff like that. Um, you can't say I can't stand it anymore. That's not considered. <laughs> a... 
That's a lack of endurance. <laughs> Why is that not a point of personal privilege? I just can't take it anymore. Okay, thank you. I won't waste our time anymore. But it basically, it has to do with some kind of issue you're having personally that's preventing you from participating in the meeting. It's not, yeah, ex you're not expressing an opinion. Order, right. Which is, I don't understand what's going on or something. Exactly, right. right. But in, in neither case, are you expressing an opinion? You are simply, right, thank you. Okay. Um, otherwise, that was the only question I had. Any thoughts on this? Because if, if, if I don't see any hands, but please speak up, Sarah, I don't see a hand. Um, but if there's any thoughts, otherwise I'm prepared to uh, entertain a motion. I guess I'll make the motion. Okay. Do I have to make the motion to remove what our previous motion already had? I'm wondering if you could simply move to uh, uh, that, uh, to accept the amendments or changes to 6.3D, something to that effect. Um, to recommend the changes. Right, right. So, so I guess I'll move to recommend that we add the phrase ish, you know, the phrases after the word or and before the words to doubt the presence of a quorum, the following to assert the charter right to postpone, period. Counselors shall not speak without recognition except to call the previous question or. Um, in as a replacement for the previously recommended changes. Okay, and um, was Emily able to get that? I think Emily might like that repeated. Um, if you can do that, Mandy, one more time. I, Emily, I'm sorry, I'm going to switch the wording of that that motion. I I move to recommend the council replace the prior recommended wording or revisions to 6.3D with the following phrase between the words or and to doubt the presence of a quorum. Here's the phrase now. To assert the charter right to postpone period, counselors shall not speak without recognition except to call the previous question or. Okay. And I think it's the very first part, Emily, you're okay with the first part of that motion. I think the rest of it is there on the screen for you to, to, to read, but are you okay with the first? Maybe you, if you could read back the first part of that motion to make sure that you and Mandy are all on the same page. Yeah, so it made it a little bit easier just because I already wrote down the, um, the phrase that you wanted to add, but so I have, um, to recommend that the council replace the prior revisions. Um, and then after that, I don't know if you want me to like add the actual revisions that you made or. I think we do, but I replace the prior revisions to 6.3D. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, after. Yeah, so after the word or, or before. before. Oh, yeah. the, the phrase to doubt the presence to doubt the and, presence of a quorum and then right. the following with, with the following language right and okay that, yeah so then i and then yeah so then the following and then i'll add that phrase that you just exactly in quotes right. just add that phrase that would be perfect okay. all right i got it thank you so we have a motion before us is there a second second deangelis thank you deangelis so we have a motion and it's been seconded um, any further discussion? Um, I, my feeling is this does address, uh, I, I hope it will address the concerns that were expressed at the meeting, um, but still uh, also address our desire to uh, make it possible for meetings to be a little bit shorter. And we'll see, as Pat has pointed out and Sarah has mentioned as well, we'll see how this plays out in the real world, but I think we do have Good, okay. So I'm prepared to go to a vote. And this time I'm gonna start with Sarah. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. The chair is an aye. Uh, so again, the vote is four zero with one absent. All right. Um, the other item is um, E and I'm going to use my privilege as a chair and suggest that we simply go back to three minutes. Um, I think that um, uh, I understand the argument we presented initially, and I have sympathy for it, but I think um, uh, 
we should just leave it the way it is. Just leave through, just not make the change is what I'm going to argue. Um, I think there are a number of people that just feel that this is, I, I'm not sure it's, it's really right, but I think they feel that somehow this is going to uh, limit debate. And um, since we do now have uh, other ways of, of reining in debate, um, I think the difference between two minutes and three minutes is, is um, uh, not that great. I think you know, often people don't use their full three minutes um, and they just stop. I think the clock is very helpful. I hopefully that will, will play a role. I think the clock backfired. You think it did? Okay. So how so? <laughs> how so? Because I felt like people felt like they had to fill their three minutes. Ah, okay. Well, that would be an argument for putting it down to two minutes then. <laughs> well, I support it going down to two minutes. There's It doesn't stop debate because you can raise your hand again. It's not that you have two minutes for, I don't believe, mm -hmm. that you, it is a limit of two minutes for the whole discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mandy. Well, I, I also support the two minutes. Um, okay. I, I might need to be a separate motion on Monday night to see, um, but I do want to point out that I found it interesting that when we were talking about the election order, all of those are two minutes. The, the nominees for president and vice president will get two minutes. All the counselors, if they want to speak after, will get two minutes. And no one, when we were discussing that, had any issue with two minutes. And then mm -hmm. we get to this one that would sort of mirror that. And there yeah. was a lot of question. Um, and so I, I obviously support the two minutes. Um, I think both of those sections should be the same frankly. Um, and so, you okay. know, I don't know how that works. I, I'm not sure if we pass whatever it is, 2.1 or whatever it is, where the uh, election procedure is first, and then this one doesn't pass. I'm not sure I'd go back and ask them to change that two minutes to three minutes there. But um, I did find it interesting that no one had a problem with two minutes in that section. But there was a lot of concern about two minutes here. Okay, good. I'm hearing. Okay, good, good, good. I'm hearing two arguments here. Pat's point is that you can speak multiple times, so two minutes is, and she feels the clock also is uh, actually maybe not necessarily well backfiring in a sense. It just gives people a sense. Well, I got another minute, so I'll keep talking. Um, so, um, and then Mandy's point that we already have a two minute limit on the election. Um, good. Proposed um, two minute limit. Right. Exactly. Proposed, not been voted. Um, Sarah, any Third. thoughts on this? Sarah? Yeah. Actually, I muted myself even before you called on me. Thank you. Um, I was I was just going to say that I also support the two minutes, and I think the the clock also. I agree. I agree with both Mandy Joe and Pat. Um, so I support the two minutes. Boy, talk about misreading a room! I tell you, my skills of psychic uh, are just gone completely. Very good. Okay, so um, I think what I'm hearing is a consensus to keep it as it is and that we will allow the counselors to decide, obviously. So we're not going to change E. The only change we've made is to 63D. And so I think we are done with this unless someone has anything else they'd like to say. Lynn, please. Uh, I would just ask that when we uh, prepare the documents, which Mandy Joe did, and I thank you for that, for the council meeting on Monday that we show the original, what it was when we came to the council the last time and what we're now proposing, particularly around D. Okay. Um, 6-3-D, yeah. Okay, I will work with, uh, with Athena and I'll probably call on Mandy for help, but yes, we will make sure that we show both the original language and then the new language. Very good. Okay, um, I was going to propose jumping uh, in whatever time Lynn has left and may, she not, may not have any, I was going to propose jumping to five, come back to four uh, later. I think four will not, does not involve Lynn directly and it's a, a matter for GOL. Um, can we talk for a minute about the timeline for setting town manager goals in town? So I was going to um, put that up on the screen. Are people okay with jumping? Do you mind? Um, I don't see any objections. Lynn, do you have a few minutes still? It's, or? it's either that or I come back for another meeting. Whatever no. you well, I'm I, also I, prepared to talk on the bylaws since I select assignments. Okay, all right. Um, do you have a preference personally? 
Okay, we'll do whatever you prefer. You don't? Um, okay, then I'm going to go to the timeline if I can remember how I did this. Um, so hang on for a second. Public way I have lined up, but I've jumped. That's a shame. So, um, all right, where to go? Where's draft? Timeline, there it is. Okay. I open this. I get it. Okay. All right. Share screen. Okay. All right. Can people see that? Probably not. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Um, I'm going to try 125 percent. Is that better? I'm going to have to scroll a little bit, but it makes it a little bit bigger. Is that is that legible to people or no? I'm not getting any response, so. It's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just need to know if it's okay. I'll keep playing with it if it's not. Um, we are technically, for, for Sarah's sake, um, and uh, we are now sort of keepers of the process, broadly speaking, is my understanding. Um, and we worked hard on this before uh, the new year, and then lots of other things happened. Um, we had a conversation with Paul that was, um, I thought, fruitful, but didn't really resolve things quite. And that maybe there is no resolution here. But the purpose of this, as I understand it, was to assist the president and ultimately the council, but particularly the president, um, in having, and Paul, in having a clear sense of what the, the timeline is for um, setting the town manager goals and perhaps more importantly, though, or equally importantly, setting a timeline for his evaluation. And there are many, many uh, moving parts and points of, of tension uh, that we've talked about. Um, but from our perspective as a committee, uh, already you see it's February. And according to this preliminary draft, all data collection instruments drafted and reviewed are uh, supposed to be happening. And in March, right? So um, I felt that it would be useful and important for us with the president uh, being present. Um, and since this is now something we are responsible for in some broad way, and since we haven't yet actually firmed it up, that we talk about it for at least a few minutes. Um, do you want, for instance, the chair to, with working with the president, to gather uh, these data collection instruments? And do you want to review them? Or do you want us to simply um, do you want us to have any role in that? Or do you want us simply to make, I or the president make sure that this is being done? Um, but we're supposed to be keeping an eye on this process. It's my understanding. Now the president is certainly doing it, um, but she has a thousand and one things to do. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is what about uh, the town manager self-evaluation date? Um, are we gonna keep it the way it is and just live with it? That's fine by me. Um, he's weighed in with some concerns. Um, does this timeline address that concern? Is there nothing we can do about it? Um, so there's also an issue of, of, of dates for his submission of his self-evaluation. Um, so two questions there. And I'm, again, I can't see hands. So um, Lynn has I, her hand up. Yeah, Lynn, please go ahead. Okay, so I wanna reverse my comments by saying, I think, I believe that the town manager has made a good suggestion regarding goals and that we seriously consider setting goals for a two year period with the option of doing exactly what we recently did, which was to amend them. Mm -hmm. uh, that the, we spend so much time on those goals and this last year we spent a lot of time on those goals mm -hmm. and they're good goals. Yeah. And I really prefer to see us, I mean, maybe we want to have a vote to reaffirm them every, you know, June, July, August or something, but mm -hmm. that we not spend as much time redoing them. So that's just a comment on the goals, mm -hmm. on the goal setting process. I, I think a vote to reaffirm is always nice, but I think that 
we did recently was we updated and added right. to one goal and basically they're now the town manager's goals. Um, with regard to the evaluation, I believe what we heard from Paul was that he feels that writing a evaluation, um, self-evaluation when it's only 10 months into the year, mm -hmm. that, 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 please correct me if this is not what you feel we heard, that yeah. that's difficult to do. Right. No, that is what he said, yes. The yeah. problem then is that it throws it all back into the summer, which is what we were trying to avoid. To avoid. Yeah. One of the reasons we were trying to avoid it was because we were trying to get the instruments out while people were still paying attention, if you will, in the months of April and May. And mm -hmm. so since the goals are what people evaluate the town manager on and we do not provide the town manager's self-evaluation to the public uh, per se, as part of their providing feedback, we could still start collecting maybe not in February or in April, but we could still start collecting public committee and staff feedback, you know, as early as May or no later than the very, very beginning of June and maybe move the counselor evaluation to July or something. I, I don't, I haven't come up with any wonderful solution for how to move this around, but those are just mm -hmm. thoughts. Thank you. Lynn, I'm sorry, I'm Mandy. Uh, I still struggle with this too. Um, I like the idea of two-year goals. I, yeah. I think it should probably be July to July. Um, so, so we would have to reaffirm them this July for one year. Um, and they be it gives the the new uh, council every term six months to figure out where they are now with goals. Um, I've struggled with the goals coming. You know, one of this one of these was if you want the goals to start July one, you need to discuss them in May and June. Um, but you not but then no matter which way you do it you have 10 months to complete a year's worth of goals from the manager's point of view, given how long it takes us to do the evaluation. Um, because if we, you know, if we say the manager, if we want the goals coming after we've seen the self-evaluation from the manager, we have to get that self-evaluation before we can adopt the goals. And that's either getting the self-evaluation in July and adopting the goals in August or getting the self-evaluation in May and adopting the goals in June. Either way, you're stuck with like 10 and a half months of a 12 month thing for the self-evaluation for the manager. Um, I'm not particularly a fan, you know, now that I've had time to away from this of a summer evaluation in a weird sense. Um, I'm not particularly a fan anymore of a May evaluation, even though I was pushing that. Um, you know, we've tied it in some sense to his, um, contract but he had a point with how do I self-evaluate when the budget isn't even passed yet you know how do I self-evaluate 10 months in um but in summer we're trying to hold less meetings you know um, and so I wonder if we this sounds really bad we have to under the charter do an evaluation every year Mm -hmm. We can't not do one for one year. We, you know, we can't do the evaluation on every other year basis. Do we move those to November and December and completely extract them from the fiscal year cycle completely? Um, you know, and try mm -hmm. and move the contract to that same time. It's just a, a question. I, I don't even know what I feel about it, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do support going to two-year goals with updates by the council every six months or something. Okay, okay. I have a point of, okay. Mandy, I may have misheard what you were saying, but I thought you said the two, that the charter doesn't allow us to have a two-year cycle on the evaluation. 
The charter requires an annual evaluation of the manager. Okay, so we would do what to, so we'd have a, a sort of a just updated once a year and then every two years do the actual full evaluation. Well, I guess what I'm proposing is council goals that start the June, the July after a council yeah. takes office and are set for yeah. the council's term of two years, an evaluation that starts in October or November of the year a council takes and, and is done every October or November, it would have to be, I, I don't know whether we can do a mini one and then a full one. <laughs> I think that's what you were proposing. Um, it seems kind of odd to require the council to evaluate a manager after five months of working with right. the manager. Uh, yeah, I mean, so maybe moving that to the end of the year makes more sense. It does to me. I mean, I didn't until you said that thing about the charter saying we have to do one every year, no matter what. Um, although we can abbreviate one of them, uh, the two-year cycle really needs not to start the first year of a new council. So, you know, this year's evaluation um, would be done by the current council, is that correct? Or am I totally goofing this up? Which means then the new council, whoever they are, um, is working fresh and their experience, they can see the goals, they can see all of that, but they're working with the town manager before. Am, am I lost in here somewhere? You're muted, Lynn. George, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, that Pat, that's what I'm hearing. My next, and I like, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm real. I'm thinking about it particularly in regard to what else do we are we doing during that that time. Um, but I also like it because it does get it out of the summer. And but then my next question is, then when do we decide compensation? And when is that compensation? I mean, I would say we've already changed the terms of the contract once in terms of dates that that going forward, you align the dates of the contract to whatever evaluation cycle we want. Okay. So in the interest of the fact that I have to leave in two minutes. No, okay. And um, let me take what I've just heard and bring it back again, okay? Does that work for you all? Well, we're, we're trying to assist you, Lynn, so, um, okay. and not, not create work for you, but obviously it does create work for you. But um, I feel obligated as sort of this committee's keeper of the process. So I feel obligated to, to, to bring it to our attention. Um, you, you want to take this and you're thinking about uh, changing the evaluation date to later in, so in November, something like that, November, December, right. Right. Um, and, and see play with that in terms of the schedule. Right. Um, yeah. Fine. Um, I still have an issue, but maybe it's for another time or maybe after you leave, we can talk about it as a committee about goals that run from July to July. So I'm still trying to think through what it means to become a member of a, of a council. Um, and you've given a set of goals that you didn't determine, um, at least for the first few months. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe that actually is, makes sense because you've just gotten, you've gotten positioned on the council. And, um, but the thought was originally, I thought that goals would be basically follow the electoral cycle. So that when a new council came in, they would uh, fashion uh, or conceivably could fashion, they could also just you know, keep the goals that already are there, but they could fashion a new set of goals. What I'm hearing now is a sense that no goals should be sort of July to July. And so when a new council comes in, um, they will be inheriting a set of goals um, that have been fashioned by a previous council. Um, they can amend them um, and come uh, July, they can create their own new goals if they want. And so maybe that's not such a terrible thing. Um, they run, sorry, George, could they run please. maybe April to April? Goals? Yeah. The goals mm -hmm. instead of fiscal year, you know, if we're going to decouple everything from years, you know, mm -hmm. I think a court, you know, that would the council takes office January, the first right. Monday of January, right. that right. would give them three months to come up with goals and get themselves set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
My my only concern is that I think be consistent with fiscal years because that's how you set your budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I mean, we lived with goals set by the previous select board, and it didn't kill us. Right. Right, right. Okay. So I, I think go. we, we'll let Lynn go, but thank you, Lynn. And we will, I'll put this on the agenda again for next meeting. Um, and if you can attend, that would be great. Um, I don't want to stop debate here. If people have some further thoughts, especially someone like Sarah who's new to this, um, the thought that this is now um, our, in a sense, our responsibility, though the bulk of the work seems to still fall on the, 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 the president um, to try and think this through. Because if the five of us, can come to some consensus about this, that would be helpful to the council. Um, and you can see there, as we just seen, there are a lot of moving parts, you know, electoral schedule, fiscal schedule, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated multi-dimensional puzzle. Um, but so maybe for our next meeting, if, if all of you could take a, a little bit of time and think about um, what you would like to see. Um, this document will be obviously available to you We've had it for quite a while um, and we still have not been able to uh, create uh, something we all can agree upon. Um, and then bring to, the goal is to bring to the council and say, okay, this is the schedule. Um, GOL is going to oversee it. And um, uh, so we're trying to get to that point. Any final thoughts? Um, town, right? All right. Um, I'm planning to put this back on the agenda for next time. We'll talk about that at the end of the meeting um, and see if you're in agreement. But I think it's something we have to keep our eyes on um, very much so. Um, next item is uh, TSO has uh, reviewed the public waste policy. And again, I'm going to try and so far it seems to work pretty well. Um, that's probably going to jinx me, but... Um, I'm going to open another document. Um, I'm going to look at um, the red line version of the public waste policy. I think that would be most useful to you all, not the clean one. Um, and so I'm going to open that and then I'm going to try and find <laughs> where, where, there we are, <laughs> where we went. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen with you and I believe that's, that's it, okay. All right, so this is, um, I'm sorry, that's not what we want. Get that out of the way. Um, that's it. Are you seeing, yes, you're seeing this, I hope. Town Council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways. Yep. Good. Thank you. And then there's a purple line in the first, you know. Yeah, blah, these, blah, are, blah. Th these are the changes. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah. And the main changes are here in section three. I think this is where we really want to focus our attention. Um, and I don't think it should take, well, I sh I'm, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah, don't. That's a Thank jinx. You. I know, absolutely. Um, I don't think there's anything in the first section that concerns us in terms of clear, consistent, or actionable. Remember, that's what we're looking at here. Um, so unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to scroll down and we can go back up if we're done. But um, the changes that were made were to this section three, mm -hmm. reservations of public ways, road or sidewalk closures, comma, signage, comma, and seating. And uh, we'll come back to that header in a moment. And under that is temporary closures, short-term closures, long-term closures, and then placement of road and temporary signs. Separate item, D. All placements of signs that relate to the control of the public way, crosswalk, speed limit, yield, stop, etc., and placements of movable signs not covered by the general or zoning bylaw is the item, period. This, the town council delegates review and action authority to the town manager with a monthly report. Okay. And then E was 
other requests is now other requests for permanent changes to the public way. And the change here, all permanent changes to roads or sidewalks, including placement of utility structures, bus shelters, benches, permanent signs, electric vehicle and other charging stations, comma, bike share stations. That should have a period, right? I believe. Additional removal of crosswalks. That should also have a period. Am I doing this right? So it's the oh. only one that uses bullet points in the entire. It's yep. completely. Yep. Yep, yep, it's yep. not following any of the other structures at all. All right, that's the first thing we need to note. The previous structures basically would list an item. As, as a sentence. Right, all right. What can we do to fix this, guys? I mean, everything else is just one long sentence, so we'd have to create one long sentence. Uh, which is probably why Evan, this was Evan's work on the fly. He was a, a hero, but I can see why. And then now we also have a Roman numeral one here. <laughs> well, the Roman numeral one is accurate. I'm sorry, Arabic numeral, I apologize. Um, yeah. Um, Those are accurate. Yeah, okay, fine. So maybe what you're suggesting is that to be consistent, which is of course important for GOL, um, other requests for permanent changes to the public way, colon, and that the rest of this should all be a sentence. It all should all be a sentence. Permanent changes to roads or sidewalks, uh, the, the semicolon, I guess. Semicolon or, after spike sh bike share stations. And then addition or removal of crosswalks, semicolon, major roadway and sidewalk redesigns, but accepting maintenance, semicolon, acceptance of public ways. I think that was the reason that Evan went to this because that seems so <laughs> uh, out of, uh, you know, the others kind of seem to belong to a list, but this was a whole new concept that maybe we don't, bo that doesn't bother us, or we'd have to make an F and a G. Is that right? That we could do that. We could just have a sentence and then have F, acceptance of public ways, G, other public way requests relating to roads, not detailed above, so, but that solve it. Sarah's on TSO, maybe we could hear from her. Uh, no, she's not. No, she's not she anymore. She was, she was, she was so she wasn't right. there this, for this. Yeah, this unfortunately she was not present for, but I was, believe it or not. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. You know, many of these, you know, if you look up at D, all placements of signs that relate to the control of the public way, and then there's parentheses and placements of movable signs not. You know, a lot of these, we use a lot of parentheses to describe what they are. Right. Um, so could we change this to all permanent changes to roads or sidewalks? Parentheses. parentheses. Placement of utility structures, bus shelters, benches. Bus shelters, benches, benches, benches permanent signs, electric know, vehicles. Charging, charging stations, bike stations. Stations, parentheses. Close parentheses. Right. I mean, even addition and removal of side of crosswalks is permanent changes. That's a description of permanent changes to roads and sidewalks. The crosswalks are, right. you know, so everything from placement of utility structures to crosswalks could be in parentheses, comma, major roadway and sidewalk redesigns, but, but exempting, exempting comma, acceptance of public ways, comma, comma, right. Or other public, yeah. public way requests relating to roads, parentheses, not detailed above, period. Although the acceptance of public ways is not other requests for permanent changes to the public. Right. right. I don't it doesn't, think it belongs there. Right. I think that needs to be an F. Right, right. Okay. But other public ways requests, this, this should also be above. And so this comes out as F. Um, and this goes back up with the rest, of this guy, the rest of these guys. Is that what you're suggesting? And God help us if I can get an F in here. <laughs> um, this, this could be ugly, folks. The public may want to turn away. I, 
<laughs> I'm working on doing it on my copy, George. Well, I, it's good practice for me, but I just warn any children watching this um, should perhaps be uh, have their eyes covered. Um, <laughs> it's probably supposed to be an and instead of an or. Okay. All right. I can't believe it. This machine is smarter than I am. Okay. That's, that's not saying much, I know. All permanent changes to, or to roads or sidewalks, parenthesis. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, Mandy, I swear. Placement of utility structures, bus shelters, da 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 charging stations, bike share stations, comma. All right. And that's also gonna be included in that. Addition. Okay, if you see anything, Mandy, shout out, but that's what I'm trying to do. Additional removal of crosswalks, close. Ah, sorry. Whoops. Oh, sorry. that was scary. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> close parenthesis, right? Yep, I, I've got the changes done if you want me to just share my screen. Oh, come on, this is fun. Don't he's you like he's me working on it. We're... <laughs> He usually poor, just poor, talks too poor much. Sarah, poor working. Sarah. She's just thinking, how did I, why did I volunteer to be on this committee? <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're making this as part, that's going to be a semicolon, right? It's going to be a comma after crosswalks. Right. Good. That's, I got it. I got it. Little M. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Like that. And then a period, right? But no, no, no. no. Because well, other people way, okay. requests relating to roads as opposed to parking or commons not detailed above. Okay. Hang on here, folks. Okay. So comma and then that. Luckily, Mandy has this on her computer as well. So all hell breaks loose. We still have another. Okay. Other public ways, way requests relating to roads not detailed above. That's a period. Yep. And, and then, then all of the little i, the little, the Roman numeral small one, and the big one below acceptance of public ways just needs copied to e. All right, now that's that's bad. Um, I don't think I follow you. I won't follow you there. Shall maybe. I share my screen, George? I don't want to admit that. I don't want. So just one more time, tell me what it is that it needs to be so done. Stop under laughing, that, Pat. You created the F. Right, exactly. See the I and the one? Yes, Highlight right. those and copy them. The whole thing, okay. Just copy the whole thing, those th those two paragraphs. Yep, copy those and put them above F okay. under E, yep. All right, so right there. Create right. a new paragraph. Right. And, and paste them there. Okay. Yep, okay. and now you can delete the little three. Yeah, that's right. And you have to delete the little one because that all permanent changes should be attached to E like it is attached to D up above. Oh, it, it might all, yep. Oh, I want to oh, come, so, on, come so, on. So put your cursor after the colon after way yeah, and, and hit the delete button. And I think that'll do it. Right. Did change the. Oh. oh, all right, let's edit undo. Yeah, yeah, we can fix the. All right, I will fix this later for the sake of my colleagues and the public and anyone else and all small children. I will fix this later. But I believe my colleagues can see, hopefully, and maybe it would be wise at this point for have Mandy to share her screen so that they can actually see this. So I'm going to stop sharing at this point, Mandy, and let you share. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. We should have probably done this earlier, but let us. No, 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 no. It was fun. It was fun. We want everyone to see the actual document in its correct form. So okay. I've got simple markup, which means you're seeing it as it looks instead of the changes. Okay. That's all right. I think that's what we need to see now. Okay. All right. Now, Evan may not be happy about this, but that's all right. We'll find out. <laughs> Okay, Mandy, if you can scroll, or maybe that's that's sufficient because the changes are just to E, correct? And then we added an F. 
Yeah, enough, right. which we have to talk about because we should describe what acceptance of public ways is, or we could just say all. Yeah, I'm thinking that that is, for instance, what happened at um, at University Drive a few months back, where that project mm -mm. Did, that did not require us to accept. Some, it would be you know, if we accepted like there's a portion of Larkspur that's not a public way. We right. get requests sometimes about uh, all of the um, Amherst Hills roads right. are not public ways yet. It's so vote to accept those as public ways. That's what acceptance of public ways means. Good, all right. And that is not what happened to University Drive. Right, okay. right. That was great right. designs. Yes, exactly. All right. So we have the language of E. Um, actually, what we've done, we haven't changed the language at all. All we've done is reformat it. Right. Um, uh, so, um, and so I don't know that that requires any. Um, and then Mandy's question about F, do we need to say anything further about F in terms, do we need to insert any language here or can we leave it as it is? So I have a question about E now that we've reformatted it. Okay, go ahead. Should we up here after crosswalks, like we do up here, use the comma, et cetera? So is this an, ex in, is, ex is it a, um, right. Is it a, is it a general description or is it these items? This is right, this, this is it, nothing more. Um, I think it is a finite list. And if we wanted to add anything, we'd have to go back and add it. Um, I think that the town manager is looking for is clear guidance as to what he can and cannot do. And if we put in et cetera, so the early, earlier one is all placements of signs that relate to control the public way. So rather than listing every conceivable sign of which there are many, that makes sense. In the second case, permanent changes to roads or sidewalks. Um, this is a question to the committee. Um, is this an exhaustive list? Um, I wouldn't guess that it is because I can't think of any, everything that might be a permanent change. Right. And so do we want to insert an et cetera, um, which then basically allows the town manager to um, I'm sorry, this is actually a town council remains keep it the public way. We're so, keeping. yeah, right. So um, I think consistency sake, why don't we include the et cetera? Okay. All right. Again, we have not, to my understanding, made any real changes to the language. Um, we have made uh, slight changes to the formatting and inserted and et cetera, um, just to be, so just for the sake of consistency with previous usage. Um, so unless I'm missing something, we have not made any substantive changes of any kind. We have just changed the formatting. Um, so any other thoughts on this? Cause I'd like to go to a uh, motion and vote. I'll give you a moment to look at it if people want to look at it. So I'm prepared to entertain a motion to declare um, the, what's the title of this, this wonderful document? I don't we, think, I'm I, sorry? We're not just a declaring on this one. We were for a report and recommendation too. Really? That's, because that's, it's that's, a policy of the council, which is our jurisdiction, uh, George. I know, I know. But TSO is taking care of that. Let TSO write about that. <laughs> Any thoughts? Uh, yeah. Um, I take it that the whole purpose of this is simply to uh, give clarity to the town manager. He came to us and said, look, I have certain places where I'm still not sure what's mine and what isn't. 
So would you please, and he made some recommendations and suggestions, and these have been looked at now by TSO and also now by GOL. Um, and so it is, to my understanding, it's driven strictly by the desire for greater clarity from the town manager. Um, I've not heard any complaints that I'm aware of from my colleagues or from any council committee or anybody else. Um, it's really just to help him. He has made some suggestions and um, I think we've adopted them uh, pretty much without exception. I don't know, what do people wanna say about this as far as, as, far as policy uh, beyond the desire simply to clarify, um, Mandy? So yeah, I, I do have one question. Um, yeah. You know, he, we've got with the D and the E, right? Um, the original policy that TSO looked at had under D essentially delegating to the town manager decisions on benches too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not bus shelters, but benches, for example, seating. Um, mm -hmm. And that's obviously been moved out by TSO to E. So I guess one of the questions I have is why did TSO do that? Because I sometimes wonder, I think it's exempting maintenance, but I'm not sure on how I read this mm -hmm. um, because it's permanent changes to roads or sidewalks and then major roadways or sidewalk redesigns exempting maintenance, um, you know? And so if he wants to move a bench when they have to replace a bench a foot, do we have to approve it because we're keeping the control of that? I, I'm less concerned about benches, frankly, than mm -hmm. other types of permanent signs. Um, so oh. I, I'd like to hear what TSO was thinking in terms of the benches one in particular, and then the exemption of maintenance, was that meant for I mean, it was in a bullet point that was for major roadway and sidewalk redesigns. It was not in the bullet point of utility structures or crosswalks or anything like that. So was there a conversation about that, George? In terms of exempting maintenance? Yeah. Well, in terms of what was it, what part of maintenance was exempted? Is it is it including the benches and permanent signs and charging stations and stuff like that? Um, or was yeah. it just sidewalk redesigns? I think, yeah. And if something needs to move a foot when the charging station needs changed, does it have to come back to us? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and like the, the parking meter, if they redo the sidewalk and the meter changes a foot, do we have to approve it based on this? And do we want that no, requirement? We, we certainly don't want it. And so if this allows, or if this seems to require it, we would be in our best interest to, to change it. Um, I think we're trying to follow a kind of common sense process. I think the town manager also obviously follows a town, sort of a common sense uh, process. Mostly we're concerned with permanent changes as opposed to temporary. Um, but there was concern about certain objects that people wanted to have a say about. Um, uh, yeah. Mandy, do you have a suggestion as to what would make this uh, clearer and also be not defy common sense um, and not make things more complicated than they are? Um, uh, basically, this is read as a way of just helping the town manager say, okay, this clearly is us or this clearly isn't us. Um, so your thought is that the way this is worded seems to suggest it's not clear whether a minor change, what would be considered, I think, by most people to be a minor change um, would require us to get involved. So yeah. you're moving, yeah, you're moving something. It's not, you're not just painting it. You're not just, you know, repairing it. It's maybe a car ran into it. So you're fixing it, but you're actually moving it to a different location but the location is maybe a foot or two, it's not, right? Or you're remo removing it, you're taking it out. Um, um, but those are permanent changes. Um, right. So maybe we're just gonna have to leave it as it is. And there are gonna be certain gray areas that um, 
uh, you know, maybe a limit to what a policy can do, um, unless there's some major confusion here. Um, I'm not sure I want to get into it. So what about this? We had up here in town commons, but exempting maintenance and repairs and we're adding conducted in the normal course of business. Mm -hmm. What if we take that yeah. and move that down to these permanent requests, get rid of it here and add it not detailed above comma, but exempting, it, it would look like this. Okay, okay. All right, insert that. Okay. okay, so now it would read all permanent changes to roads or sidewalks placed in the utility, da 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 major roadways and sidewalk redesigns or other public way requests relating to roads, opposed to parking or commons not detailed above. But exempting maintenance and repairs conducted in the normal course of business. And maintenance and replacement? I, I mean repairs. Yeah. Yeah. Deals with the replacement, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I um I mean, this, this phrase is meant to cover what would be considered common sense type situations right. that clearly would not require our involvement. And um, so it just repeats it, I mean, in a sense, or, you know, um, it clarifies exempting maintenance. I, I don't see why it can't be put in here. Um, it may be overkill, but, um, it doesn't create confusion. I'm trying to change the wording as little as possible, but that's, you know, I mean, this is again, so we are inserting one phrase again for the purpose of clarity to um, make it clear that, that these sorts of um, uh, situations do not involve just ordinary maintenance and repairs. Yeah. And that, that's fair. And it's a little bit clearer than exempting maintenance. So, so I think that's fine. And it's borrowing from above where we have a similar phrase that reinforces that point, which I'm sure is clear to the town manager, but nonetheless, it doesn't hurt to have it in here. All right. Okay. Now I have no idea how I'm going to present this to the council but that's be my problem because we have TSO we have TSO changes and then we have GOL changes on top of TSO changes <laughs> uh, yeah and and unfortunately the purple isn't necessarily indicative of the no no GOL there's no change, there's no right? there's no way that people at can this point that. the GOL yeah. changes even this this change here the but exempting maintenance right. this yeah. is clarity yeah I, I'm certainly going to make the case that we've made no, no sub, obviously no substantive word changes, but we did insert this one phrase for the purpose of clarity. Otherwise it's just strictly formatting and um, that's how I'll present it. And if, if someone from TSO, it'd probably be Evan, uh, cause he's the one who, who worked on this, but he was doing it on the fly. Um, uh, he will speak up if he feels that somehow we've, we've crossed the line. I don't think we have, but uh, and good. we split out the acceptance of public waste for clarity purposes too. Right, 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 exactly. We didn't change the wording. We just made it a separate uh, item. So I think this is, um, uh, and Mandy, this is a document that you have now. So yep. oh, thank you. Um, I tried. All it's, right. It's a good try, honey. Yeah, I know, exactly. Give me another year or two. Um, right. I'll send it to you. Thank you. All right, so we need a motion on this and we need action on it. So I would uh, entertain a motion to um, recommend to the town council that um, the public ways, what's this title again? Uh, so the motion is to recommend to the town council 
that they adopt. And then I just need the title up above, Mandy, um, whatever it is, a public way, yeah. The doc yeah, the, the, the whole, it wasn't amended on February 11th by the council. That's yeah. the TSO amendment, proposed yeah. amendments, right? Yeah, right. Um, so the motion is to recommend the proposed TSO modifications to the town council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways as amended at GOL on February 17th, 2021, and declare them clear, consistent, and actionable. So again, we are recommending that the town council adopt the TSO, um, you wanna say revisions? The proposed revisions. Proposed revisions uh, by TSO of February 11th yep. as, I'm sorry? As amended by uh, GML on February on 17th. 17th. And declare them clear, consistent, consistent and actual. actual. Okay. So, Emily, how do you feel about that one? <laughs> I'm, feel, I'm feeling better about this one than the last one. So. <laughs> Emily, that's a very bad sign. I think we could talk after this meeting. Um, no, I, I have you, it. I have it. I promise I have it. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to make you read it back, but we'll figure it out later. So we have a motion. Uh, you've just heard the motion read twice. Um, is there a second? Somebody besides me. Second, Schwartz. <laughs> ah, Sarah, thank you. Sarah seconds. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Um, I see no hands raised. No one wants to talk more about this. I can't imagine why. So we're going to immediately to the vote. And this time the chair, who has now moved permanently to San Francisco, um, is going to vote aye. Mandy. Aye. Uh, Pat. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Thank you. So the vote is 4-0 with one absent. Um, the motion carries. I'm going to skip over the minutes if, unless someone really objects, partly because the wrong minutes are listed on the agenda, partly because apparently the chair was sent the right minutes, but they got lost in the, uh, right? So I will bring those minutes back to you at the next meeting. I have no items anticipated by the chair. I'm taking a look here. Okay, my screen is a mess. Um, we have no attendees. I can't imagine why. This is one Pat of our more. Uh, Pat has her hand up. She's Since not Pat. an attendee. Uh, Since Pat. Pat did a little bit of work on her bylaws. Uh, we're getting to that. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were going to. No, you're right, Pat. I skipped over it. So uh, <laughs> let me go to Pat and ask her to tell us about her bylaws. I have um, contacted the fire chief and the police chief on the open burning for the fire chief and junked vehicles and also rec recreational vehicles because there was a conflation of those two things. I'm waiting for replies. So at the, our next meeting, I should have uh, those um, updated. I haven't uh, worked on the foam one yet, but. But there's been progress there. Yeah, so if I get the foam one done, I'll be done done. You get a gold star. Okay, Pat, that's great. Um, Mandy, of course, has done. Uh, yeah, great. I know. She's I know. Perfect. We're not. She's not even. We're not even <laughs> going to talk about that. Um, Sarah, are you willing, or have you decided yet whether you can take on the agcom uh, matter? Is that something that you're willing to take on? So I should have gotten a hold of you earlier, um, George. I have a, a family situation that okay. I is finding that my time is somewhat constrained, but at the same time. I think it would be a good learning experience for me to do it um, and okay. to try to take that on. So I was dithering and that's why I didn't get back to you. So um, I would like to do it. Great. Okay. So maybe I can just get in contact with you. And, and I know that uh, Pat has said that she would help me with a, a little bit of the stuff that I don't know. Great, great. Now, Pat is an excellent source. Uh, we reach out to her as well with a couple of things I'm working on just to try to understand what the bylaw review committee meant by some of those notes, um, but great. So um, I'm back, good. And uh, Darcy has gotten back to me on her materials. And so 
at the moment, uh, we're making progress, and that's all I can ask for. Yeah, um, George, Mandy, I'm please. On some of mine, because I emailed Paul, as you saw, George, um, yeah. regarding the activities and amusements. One, uh, actually, regarding a number of them. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, but the activities and amusements. Um, Paul got back to me with a CC to George. Let me see what that email is. Um, see right. if I can find it. Um, and he got back to me with another one. Um, and yes, yeah, so so Chief Livingston regarding activities and amusements. The question was the fine number one, but also because it's slated at two hundred right now per penalty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just so you know, the activities and amusements is no person shall play at ball or any similar amusement in any street, no person or group of persons while playing at ball or engaging in any amusement or activity in any park or common of this town shall interfere with another event or activity already in progress or previously reserved. Um, and the penalty is $200 per um, violation right. or non-criminal. And so the first question was, do you, is that penalty correct? Should right. we modify the number? And then the second one was, do we even need this one anymore? Right. Um, and Chief Livingstone wrote back, quote, I don't ever recall making a comment about it being a good tool. Um, that was something from bylaw review that I had written to Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, then he says, as I can't say, if I have ever heard of anyone being written mm -hmm. up for a town bylaw 3.15 activities and amusement violation. I remember some discussion in the language section about, quote, interfering with others of activities already in progress, end quote. But in the end, if the town council is looking to get rid of bylaws that just plain are not necessary or not enforced, this one certainly applies and I would support that. Um, then Paul wrote also, since the fine is pretty high, he felt that it was a detriment to using it. So I think that's one that we as a GOL need to discuss whether we want to either change the fine or just remove. Okay. Or recommend or recommend the council remove from the bylaws completely. Okay. All right. That is something we could put on the agenda for next time and actually start moving some of these along. So 3.15. And then um, there was another update from Paul on a different one. Well, there's 316 here and also um, 326 on nuisance. And, and Paul on um, the conservation land one. This ah, one conservation was, land. Okay. I think, um, littering. Yeah. I think this one was the littering and illegal dumping one, which the question was refer to CONCOM and conservation department for discussion and recommendation on whether to broaden the types of lands on which littering and illegal dumping are prohibited. Specifically, bylaw review committee considered including town conservation land and land and agricultural use. Um, and Dave Zomack write, wrote back briefly, I think there is some merit to including Amherst conservation land, the places in town that we see dumping are along roadways, sometimes in the public way or just outside them, think Mill Lane or Pulpit Hill Road, conservation areas and recreation areas. As always, the challenge is finding or catching the people doing the dumping, land and ag use or APR might be more complex as they are private. What we often hear from APD when we try to enforce rules on conservation land is, quote, show us where it says you can't do X. Without getting overly complicated, it might be good to have the CONCOM weigh in as I believe they would be very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paul said, do we want comments from the CONCOM? So based on that, should I respond saying, yes, we'd like comments on the con from the CONCOM on this? I would think that would be appropriate yeah. because with their comments, then we could move to making a proposed change. Um, but without their comments, we'd be sort of just making a proposed change with uh, just on our own. So yes, I think the answer okay. is yes. So 316, um, you might have some report. Well, we kind of may not act that quickly, but that's- They might not act that quickly, but it sounds like um, adding um, recreation lands um, you know, there's other, whatever's not on this one, adding yeah. some of it is supported. And then we just have to see if CONCOM supports conservation land. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Can I ask a quick question. Please, Sarah. So with agricultural lands, um, as someone who has a farm who uh, people often dump things uh, here, um, mm -hmm. And I think that that is actually an issue. Do we want to talk to AgCom and do we want to maybe discuss, I don't know, with um, Conservation and with AgCom about whether or not APR lands should be 
included in how it would be enforced. And I'm saying that also as someone who um, had a has a tow yard that was close to our river and you know there was some issues with that and we didn't really have much of a recourse in in saying a lot about what people were doing so maybe that's something we mm -hmm. could just look into i i can certainly ask paul to refer to both concom and agcom for comments okay okay it would make me happy not mean nothing may come of it but thanks okay, okay. i will do that Okay, all right. Agcom's the one that deals more with APR land, Sarah, than CONCOM does? Um, well, agri they're the Agricultural Commission. So um, it used to be all farmers. Now, not so much, but I still think it would be, they deal with agricultural land and a lot of it in Amherst is now APR'd. So I, th I think that would make sense, but okay. I would talk to both. Okay, okay. So, that right. makes a lot of sense if they're the ones that deal with the APRs. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that people need to do what Mandy's done here, but um, this is, an, you know, because the document can also be, you can uh, add material to the updates document. Yep. That's, um, but you can also just send it to me directly and I will add it. But um, so we will, this will be on the agenda again, as it will be for all future meetings. Um, and we will do these updates and I appreciate it. And hopefully we're, our goal is to get through this by March. Um, obviously March, uh, 31st, <laughs> but that's the plan. Um, all right, what else? Um, future agenda items, just briefly, uh, we will be looking at a decarbonization resolution um, on that on March 3rd um, and the sponsors, um, I am a sponsor actually. Um, and so I believe it's Darcy Dumont. Sarah You're not gonna be able to vote then, George. That I was going to make that point, Pat. Thank you. I will abstain. That's not true, vote. and you know it. I will abstain. I think that is actually the right thing to do. Well, you're wrong about but, that. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, that will be on our agenda. Um, and uh, Sarah, I don't want to put you on the spot, so I'm not going to ask you. Don't have to respond. But um, if you are interested in doing that sponsorship, just send me an email. But if we don't respond at the moment, my understanding is the two sponsors are Darcy and myself. Um, uh, we, uh, I did promise that we would put the interview process for council appointments on the agenda, and that is on my notes for next meeting. So March 3rd, I plan to have a discussion on uh, the two processes that are used and whether we need a single process. Uh, a number of councillors have raised that question, so I think it should be discussed by GOL. Um, we'll have a bunch of minutes <laughs> to look at. Um, we'll have a report from Mandy, uh, hopefully on 3.15, and updates uh, from others um, as to how they're doing with their bylaw reviews. Um, we will also have, at least in theory, the timeline also on the agenda. Um, Lynn, I assume, will be present, and I will again try to put that near the front of the meeting um, so that she has a chance to say what she needs to say before she has to leave. Any other items that people have in their minds right now for future uh, meetings? You can always email me, um, um, but uh, that's at the moment what I have. So uh, for March 3rd, I see no public presence. So there is no uh, need for public comment. Um, any final comments, concerns, questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call this meeting to, I'm uh, going to adjourn this meeting and again, thank my colleagues and um, Emily and Athena for you, your help. Yeah, and uh, yeah. see you uh, all too soon, colleagues. <laughs> Take care, everyone. You're welcome to come we to San Francisco can. anytime. Yeah, be good. Bye-bye. <laughs>